Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 6, form 4, topic 5, we were dealing with the first part of the chemistry of iron metal and we have done the occurrence and also the extraction of iron metal. So today, lesson 7, we'll be proceeding to the second part of the iron metal where we are going to do number 1, the physical and the chemical properties of iron metal, number 2, the types of iron and their uses, Number three, alloys of iron and their uses. And lastly, we will be concluding with two extended questions. So kindly stay with us until the end of the video. So let's start with the physical properties of iron. And we'll say number one, it is lustrous, that means shiny gray metal. Number two, it has a melting point of 1530 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of 2750 degrees Celsius. So number three, we're saying it is ductile and malleable. And has high ten tensile strength. Number four, we are saying it's a good conductor of heat and electricity. Number five, we are saying it has a density of 7.86 gram per centimeter cube. Then number six, we are saying it is ferromagnetic, which means that it becomes magnetized when placed in a magnetic field. Next, let's go to the chemical properties of iron. And we are saying iron is a moderately reactive metal. It forms compounds in two oxidation states. That's oxidation of plus 2 and plus 3. And we're saying most iron 2 compounds can be easily oxidized to iron 3 compounds. Number 1. We are going to start the reaction of iron with air. We're saying iron does not react with dry air at a temperature. When iron wool or iron border is heated strongly in air, we are told it burns with a red glue forming a black solid called dry iron tetraoxide with the chemical formula of Fe3O4. So for us to write that reaction, we are going to have iron metal with solid, three moles of iron metal, reacting with two moles of oxygen gas, we are going to get triiron tetraoxide with the solid. So we are saying when iron is exposed to most air, it reacts with oxygen and water forming hydrated iron 3 oxide. And this chemical formula is Fe2O3 dot two moles of water of crystallization in a process called rusting. And during the reaction, we are told iron combines with the oxygen in the air forming iron 3 oxide. So here we are going to have four moles of iron solid reacting with three moles of oxygen gas, giving us two moles of iron 3 oxide, which is solid. Then the iron 3 oxide forms reacts with water to form hydrated iron 3 oxide. This is a brown insoluble substance commonly called rust. Remember we said rust is a brown coating that usually forms on the surface of iron metal. So the question for that reaction will be iron 3 oxide reacting with two moles of water giving us hydrated iron 3 oxide which is the rust that we are talking about. So I say next, unlike the layer of aluminum oxide, which does not allow air or water to penetrate, we are told rust, that's iron 3 oxide, is porous and does not prevent the metal from further rusting. So instead, it allows both air and water to penetrate, allowing the rusting process to continue beneath it. So remember, aluminium metal was having a coating of aluminium oxide. We said that aluminium oxide prevents any reaction or further reaction from occurring. But iron metal, it is iron 3 oxide, does not prevent any reaction from occurring. Instead, it allows the rusting process to continue beneath it. So number two, that's part B, we are going to go to reaction of iron with water. And we are saying iron does not react with cool water in the absence of oxygen. However, when steam is passed over red hot iron, try iron tetraoxide and hydrogen gas are formed. Remember, when a metal reacts with steam, we are going to get metal oxide and also hydrogen gas. So the metal oxide that we are going to get here is triiron tetraoxide. So three moles of iron solid will react with four moles of steam, which is gas that we are going to get triiron tetraoxide solid and also four moles of hydrogen gas.
So next but C, we are going to do reaction of iron with chlorine. What will happen when iron reacts with chlorine? We are told chlorine reacts with heated iron wool forming a bronze solid. That is iron 3 chloride. And the apparatus used for this experiment is shown below. So we are going to use this experiment. Here we are having dry chlorine gas because we cannot use wet. Remember, we are told iron 3 chloride is highly deliquescent and it will readily dissolve in the wet gas if in case we use wet chlorine gas. So the precaution for this experiment will be dry chlorine gas to be passed through combustion tube before heating, before heating of the iron wool in order to expel all the air in the setup in order to prevent oxidation of the iron. Then here we are having iron 3 chloride which is collected in the in the flask this flask that we are having and in the guide tube we are having an hydrous calcium chloride we are going to use we are going to see the role of an hydrous calcium chloride and also the substance that we can use in the place of an hydrous calcium chloride so to start with the question for the reaction that takes place we are going to have two moles of iron solid reacting with three moles of chlorine gas we are going to get two moles of iron 3 chloride. Remember, we are saying iron 3 chloride is highly deliquescent. This means it will absorb most of from the air and form a solution. This is prevented by having anhydrous calcium chloride in the setup. So, what is the role of the anhydrous calcium chloride? We are told it absorbs any atmospheric moisture. So, we are told next note. The iron 3 chloride sublimes when heated and then condenses into crystals when cooled. This explains why it can be collected using the method shown in the diagram. Check the way they are collected. They are collected as sublimates in that flask. Next, we are saying excess chlorine, which is poisonous, escapes into the fume chamber. And the substance that we can use in the place of the anhydrous calcium chloride will be calcium oxide. So the advantage of using even calcium oxide of anhydrous calcium chloride is that calcium oxide being basic will react with acidic chlorine gas. So number four, we are going to do reaction of iron metal with acids. And we say iron reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to form iron 3 chloride and hydrogen gas. And the equation for that reaction will be iron solid reacting with two moles of hydrochloric acid. We are going to get iron 3 chloride solution and also hydrogen gas. So next we are saying iron hardly reacts with cool concentrated sulfuric six acid. However, with hot concentrated sulfuric six acid, iron 2 sulfate, sulfur peroxide, and water are formed. So the equation for that reaction will be iron solid reacting with concentrated sulfuric six acid giving us iron 2 sulfate solution and also we are going to have sulfur peroxide gas and also two moles of water. Here we can see some observations. One of the observations that we are going to see here is the green solid dissolves in the acid. The second observation will be a bell green solution is formed and that's due to the formation of the iron 2 sulfate solution. Then next we are going to see a colorless gas with a pungent irritating smell is formed and that's due to the production of sulfur peroxide gas. So next we are going to see iron react with dilute nitric 5 acid forming iron 2 nitrate as well as ammonia and oxides of nitrogen which combines to form ammonium nitrate. So the equation for that reaction will be 4 moles of iron metal solid reacting with 10 moles of nitric 5 acid. We are going to get 4 moles of iron 2 nitrate solution and we are going to get ammonium nitrate solution as well as 3 moles of water. So next we are saying iron reacts with moderately concentrated nitric 5 acid forming iron 3 nitrate and nitrogen 2 oxide gas and also water. The question for the reaction will be iron metal solid reacting with 4 moles of concentrated nitric 5 acid. We are going to get 1 mole of iron 3 nitrate solution plus 1 mole of nitrogen 2 oxide gas plus 2 moles of water which is liquid. So let's go to the distinction between iron 2 and iron 3 compounds. 
So the same iron 2 and iron 3 compounds can be distinguished by reacting the solutions with alkalis such as sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide solutions. So the same iron 2 compounds form a green precipitate which is insoluble in excess alkali, be it sodium hydroxide solution or ammonium hydroxide solution or aqueous ammonia. While iron 3 compounds form a broad precipitate which is insoluble in excess alkali, be it sodium hydroxide solution or aqueous ammonia. Next, let's proceed to types of iron and their uses. We start with big iron and we are told it is iron obtained from the palast furnace. It contains 5% carbon, 2% phosphorus, silicon, sulfur and also manganese as impurities. And we are told these impurities lower the melting point of iron. Number two, we are having cast iron. So in cast iron, we are told the big iron is molded into casts. So what are the properties of cast iron? It's hard but brittle due to the impurities. Number two, it cannot be welded and its strength is relatively lower. So what is the use of cast iron? We are told it's used in making cookers, rails, water pipes, bansimbana pieces and even stools. Number three, we are going to proceed to wrought iron and we are saying this is the purest form of commercial iron with 99% iron and 0.25% carbon. Next, we go to properties. We are saying it is soft but tough and can be welded, fused, and hammered. So the use of wrought iron is it's mainly used in making iron sheets, iron nails, wires, chains, electromagnets, and farm machinery. So we proceed to alloys of iron and their uses, and we are saying over 90% of iron is used in the form of steel, which is an alloy of iron and between 0.1% and 0.5% carbon. So we start with part A. We are saying some alloys contains iron and carbon only and are called carbon steels. There are several types of carbon steels depending on the carbon content and we are saying each of them has its unique properties and it is used for a variety of purpose as shown in the table below. We have type of steel, the carbon content, the properties and also uses. So we start with the first one, soft steel. Soft steel, it has low carbon content. So it's having 0.1 to 0.2% of carbon content. It is property soft with low tensile strength and it can be easily welded. The use of that soft steel is its use in making wires, nails and also chains. So next we are going to have medium carbon content called mild steel. It's having 0.2% to 0.5% carbon content and it is property it's moderately hard but it can be hardened by heat and treatment when we are told it can be welded. It is uses include car bodies, it's used to make car bodies, chains, shafts and electricity by loans. So next we are going to have hard steel, it's containing high carbon contents of 0.5% to 0.7%. So the products include quite hard, it can be welded with care. So these include springs, we're having train wells, chisels, razor blades. So lastly, we're having very hard steel. So very hard steel contains very high carbon contents and it's having 0.7 to about 1.5% carbon content. And this product is very hard. So it is used include rock drills, railway lines. It includes saws for cutting metals and also machine tools. So next we are going to go to part B, that we are saying other alloys of iron contains other metals and some carbon, which is less than 0.5%. They are called steel alloys. They also have unique properties and are used for a variety of purposes and we are told these are as full. So number one, we have a stainless steel and we are told this contains 18% chromium and 8% nickel. It is property include it is tough and does not rust. It's used in making cutlery, 
surgical equipments and car bombs. So number two, we have tungsten steel. We are told it contains or this contains 5% tungsten and it is very hard. That's one of this property. We are saying it is very tough and hard and even gets tougher at high temperatures. What is the use of tungsten steel? We are told it's used to make edges of high speed cutting tools. So number three, we are having manganese steel. It contains 13% manganese. It is property includes tough, hard and springy. What is the use of the manganese steel? We are told it's used to make drill bits, rock breaking machinery and also springs. Let's go to the last part of our class today. That's extended questions on the chemistry of iron. We are having two extended questions. So we are going to start with the number one. Kindly have a look at the question. So that's the diagram that we have. In question number one, we we'll go to the questions. So let's proceed to question number two. So it is a follow chart. Try to have a look of the follow chart. Let's proceed to the questions. Solanas, that's the end of our class today. Thank you for watching.